In the continuation of our previous lectures, we were discussing for AS level chemistry functional group. The next functional group left over, those are amines and the last one is nitride. In case of amines, this is the simplest formula of ammonia. Whenever a hydrogen atom of ammonia is replaced by carbon atom, then the resulting compounds are called as amines. Amines. The functional group of amines is represented as vacant valency and NH2. NH2. This is the functional group of amines. For example, for example, we know that the general formula for amine is Cn H2n plus 1 and NH2. Now, this is the general formula for the amines. If we use this formula and put the values from 1, 2, 3, 4, when we put one value for N, we get methyl amine. Methyl amine. If we put N is equal to 2, we will get ethyl amine. Now, if we want to name this organic amount, due to the presence of this NH2 group, this is amine. But as there is a branch present in this formula, that's why we will number the carbon atom from the side of functional group. This is carbon number 1, this is 2, this is 3. To name this, this will be 2 methyl propane 1 amine. Propane, because 3 carbon atoms are present in this compound. If we name this, as this is indicating, if we consider this carbon 1, 2, and 1, 2, and then this is 3, automatically the name will become propane due to the 3 carbon 2 amine means this functional group is present on second carbon. Similarly, all these amines are primary amines. These are the primary amines. Those amines in which the functional group contain two hydrogen atoms, those will be called as primary amines. Now, in this formula, there is only one hydrogen present with the functional group. It means that two alkyl groups are directly attached to nitrogen atom. That's why this will be the example of secondary amine. And this will be named as simply we can say dimethyl amine. But more precisely, we mention the position of both of these alkyl groups, putting N N. This N will be repeated twice. This will indicate that alkyl group is directly attached with the nitrogen atom. N N dimethyl amine. This is a secondary amine. And if we name this, all hydrogen atom from ammonia are replaced by alkyl, uh, sorry, alkyl groups. It means that name of this will be N N N trimethyl amine. And this is an example of tertiary amines. Now, this is the functional group of amine. Depending upon this functional group, we can differentiate between different types of amines. Either these are primary, these are secondary, or these are tertiary. And this is the method how we name the amines. Now, the last functional group, the last functional group is nitride. Nitride, Cn, 
nitrile functional group is represented by Cm and the general formula for R nitrile is Cm H2N plus 1 and then this Cm capital M. Here we can use value from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But if we put value 0, we will get inorganic hydrocyanic acid. Hydrocyanic acid, which is not organic. But when we put N is equal to 1, we will get this first formula, first member of this homologous series. As this compound contains two carbon atoms, that's why this is called as ethane. And due to this functional group, the name will become nitrile. Ethane nitrile. Ethane nitrile. But and when we use value of n is equal to 2, we will get propane nitrile. Then, depending upon the number of carbon atom more, according to the alkane naming, we will name the alkane first and then we will add the uh, prefix nitrile in the name to mention this functional group. That was all about the functional group naming technique and methods and with different examples. Now, the next topic is bonding in organic compound. Bonding in organic compound. In organic compound, there are two types of bonds present. One is called as sigma bond. Sigma bond and second is called pi bond, pi bond and this is represented as pi is represented as uh, sigma is represented as just like this and pi is represented just like this, pi bond. Now, how these are formed and what are the necessary conditions? We know that there are four types of subshells. For example, S, P, D and F. Four types of subshells are present all together in the chemistry. But to explain the organic molecule bonding, we need just S and P subshells not D and F. Now, we know that S of all subshells, S subshell of all shell is always spherical. And P subshell of all shells will present in the form of dumbbell shape. This is P and this is S. Both of these are taking part in the formation of both of these bonds. Now, how sigma bonds are formed? Depending upon their shapes, we know that there are three main points where sigma bond is formed. Uh, the first point is, the first point for the sigma bond formation is common region common region must be must be present between two nuclei two nuclei the common region must be present between two nuclei. This is the basic and important need for the sigma bond formation. Second is 
इलेक्ट्रॉन चार्ज डेंसिटी इलेक्ट्रॉन चार्ज डेंसिटी मस्ट बी सिमेट्रिकली अराउंड द बॉन्ड एक्सेस अराउंड द बॉन्ड एक्सेस दीज आर द टू मेन कंडीशन फॉर द सिमा बॉन्ड फॉर्मेशन नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन एज वी नो डेट एज वी नो डेट एस सबशन इज ऑफ वेलकम वेन एवर एस सबशन विल फॉर बॉन्ड With the atom containing S subshell, automatically S subshell will overlap with S subshell and make such type of common region. Now this is the common region. If we mention that this is the positively charged nuclei of this atom and this is the positively charged nuclei of this atom, then the first condition is fulfilled. the common region is present between two nuclei now if we assume this is the bond axis this is the line joining the two nuclei for example if one nucleus is at this point and second nucleus is at this point then the electron charge density must be symmetrically distributed around this bond axis suppose that this is a bond axis this is a bond axis and the electron charge density must be symmetrically distributed around this bond axis this will fulfill our second point automatically if these two conditions are fulfilled we will call that this bond is sigma bond second if s subshell of one atom overlap with p orbital of other atom p orbital of other atom then what will happen overlapping just like this will take place if we assume that this is the nucleus of one atom and this is the nucleus of second atom automatically what will happen the common region will develop between two nuclei and the electron charge density will be distributed around symmetrically around the bond axis again due to the overlapping of s with p will be always sigma bond and the example of this we can take formation of h2 molecule and the formation of this type of bonding we can take an example of hcl in which s orbital of hydrogen will overlap with p orbital of chlorine making such type of the overlapping in both of these now next is third point whenever p orbital overlap with p orbital end to end for example if these two are the p orbitals if the, these two are the p orbitals then automatically both of these p orbitals if they overlap via end to end automatically they will form a common region between the two nuclei and the electron charge density will definitely be symmetrically distributed around the bond axis around the bond axis now what type of overlapping will occur as a result this situation will arise and in this case if this is the nuclei of one atom and this is the nuclei of second atom automatically the common region will become this one and this will be in between two nuclei and the electron charge density which will present in this common region that will be automatically symmetrically distributed around the bond axis and so we will call that a sigma bond is formed example for such type of overlapping is cl2 or 
Br2. We can take the example of such. All these are the three conditions in which S overlap with S, S overlap with P, and P overlap with P end to end. Horizontally, then definitely in all such cases, sigma bond will form and both of these points will be fulfilled. Now, how the pi bond will form? Uh, always pi bond is formed when already sigma bond is established. It never happens that pi bond formed first, it will never take place. Always, always, first of all, sigma bond will be formed between two atoms, and then afterwards, the pi bond will form. How pi bond will form? What are the conditions for the pi bond? As I have mentioned these two points for pi bond, for pi bond, these points are opposite. The common region must be present. Here is a between, but in pi bond, not between must be above and below the line joining the two nuclei. First condition is common region. Common region must be above and below the line joining to nuclear line joining the two nuclei and second second electron charge density electron charge density may be may be above or below the line joining two nuclei. How this will happen? To explain this, to explain this, we can consider the example of O2. We can consider the example of O2. Here, when sigma bond is formed, then whenever P orbital will overlap with P orbital sidewise or vertical, then what will happen? The common region will produce just like this. This is the line joining the two nuclei and this is the common region developed. The common region is above and below the line joining the two nuclei. And the electron charge density may be above or may be below the line joining the two nuclei. Electron charge density will reside only on one side. And this is the only condition for the formation of the pi bond. Now, this is important to note that all the bonds which are formed first they are definitely sigma first of all sigma bond will form secondly all the single bonds are always sigma bond because they are established first and after the formation of sigma bond if any further bond is developed between the joined atoms that will be definitely a pi bond. Example of such bonds we can take. O2 molecule is of uh, the uh, example of such molecule in which along with sigma bond there is a pi bond present also. I have explained all the respective concepts regarding sigma and pi bonds. Hope you uh, understood all these concepts. Please. 
comments, like, and subscribe my YouTube channel for the upcoming lectures. Thank you all.